ಸ್ವಹಂ ತತ್ಸವಿತುರ್ಹರಿಣ್ಯಂ ಭರಗೋ ದೇವಸ್ಯ ನೀಮಹಿ ಧಿಯೋ ಯೋ ನ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯಾಂಧಂ So namaste everyone and uh, this video is based on your questions and um, today we are going to discuss very interesting question connected with the um, Kriya Yoga tradition and divine personality of Mahavatar Babaji immortal Mahatma immortal guru actually the founder of Kriya Yoga tradition um okay well the question is uh about um mahatar babaji and uh, lord krishna okay according to some um traditions um mahatar babaji is krishna uh, or maybe he was krishna or maybe he uh you know had appeared in the history as krishna many centuries many thousands of years back so the question is uh from some viewers what does it mean that mahavatar babaji actually is krishna how can we understand it okay first of all let us be clear what does it mean krishna or who is krishna and um uh, really the question about krishna is both Uh, who is krishna and what does it mean krishna because krishna is personality and in the same time krishna is philosophical term uh, okay historical krishna um, okay according to the vedic hindu tradition he was born and he he lived actually something like maybe 3 maybe 4000 um, years before uh, jesus the christ so it means okay 5 6000 years back um, but that's historical krishna and who was that historical krishna by the way we know quite a lot of details of his life and mission and miracles uh, okay he lived um something like five or six thousand years back in north india and so we have um, a couple of scriptures a couple of scriptures it's um actually in uh, srimad bhagavatam and uh, the second one is mahabharata with a lot of stories about historical krishna but at the same time krishna means symbol symbol of the true self divine consciousness lord god who is actually uh, shining in your spiritual heart so um then let us discuss one more not so easy question especially not so easy for the hindu people uh, okay bhagavad gita greatest just the greatest book the central spiritual message of the vedic hindu tradition but why i told you that this is not so easy question especially for the hindu people because according to the hindu religion actually bhagavad gita is the message of krishna himself but really it is not um, okay uh, bhagavad gita is written not by krishna but um, bhagavad gita written by a great sage whose name was vyasadeva and actually uh, of course we are not sure exactly but approximately the bhagavad gita was written something like maybe 10 or maybe 15 centuries after historical krishna so it means no question that uh, bhagavad gita is um, i mean in a real sense the message uh, from historical krishna krishna in bhagavad gita is just um, okay uh, some great master um, okay whom vyasa deva is the author of bhagavad gita okay just he described his okay message um, but really that's very important that bhagavad gita is not written by krishna um okay a very important um, detail uh, about uh, creation of bhagavad gita by vyasadeva great sage is that um, um, vyasadeva he wrote this um, bhagavad gita actually while staying in badrinath that's himalayas 
Um, to be exact, it's not Badrinath, but few kilometers after uh, Badrinath. Um, that is a village by name uh, Mana. Mana village. And even now we have a small cave with a beautiful, wonderful um, idol of Vyasadeva. And this is historical place where Vyasadeva actually wrote Bhagavad Gita. Okay, I'm sure that um, most of you um, know pretty well about location of Badrinath. But for those of you who are not sure about Badrinath, so this is Himalayan mountains. Um, you know, uh, snow, uh, really top, um, uh, very high mountains. And Badrinath um, is the most holy, the most sacred place in Himalayas. I was really uh, fortunate enough to have been there a number of times. It's a very powerful, very powerful place. And very interesting um, point is that just all that mountains in the Badrinath area, exactly the area where uh, all the immortal Mahatmas, they have their cave ashrams. Mahagar Babaji, Goraknath, um, and also, by the way, Buddhist masters like Padma Sambhava, etc. They all stay basically in this part of Himalayas. Because, you know, now we have like Indian, then China, then border. Okay, but if you just take map of this um, area and just for a while forget about political map then you can easily see that the holy mount kailash is very near to badrinath it's very near and this 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 is very special area okay and it means that okay according to the oral tradition um, by the way vyasadeva the great sage who wrote Bhagavad Gita was um, actually direct disciple of Mahatar Babaji and he wrote Bhagavad Gita okay in this part of Himalayas where all that secret cave ashrams of Mahatar Babaji and other immortal masters uh, they, the, the location of the, uh, all that cave ashrams exactly is near Badrinath, near Mana village so that's very very interesting well, in my videos and books, uh, um, sometimes I uh, like uh, r relate to the so-called oral tradition. And of course, uh, some of you, maybe with a more scientific approach mm, to the uh, information, may um, ask, okay, how can we believe into such a things like oral tradition? We need uh, ancient documents, we need proof, we need um, ancient scriptures with a clear description and information. I'm sorry to say, I mean, I mean, if, if, if you're not ready to believe into oral tradition of Kriya Yoga, Tantra Yoga, well, that's not my problem because actually the greatest part of information, the most important message is actually not in the books but in the oral tradition. Uh, and it's interesting that all ancient scriptures, um, actually there is a possibility to understand ancient scriptures only if you combine that written message with the oral tradition. That's the reason why it is absolutely necessary to uh, learn Kriya Yoga, Tantra Yoga, meditation, mantras, philosophy of Vedanta, Buddhism directly from the masters. So, uh, and um, I spent actually uh, many, many years in India, was learning Kriya Yoga tradition from my personal guru, Yogi Ramak. And uh, anyway, some um, very important, you know, pieces of information, which we call actually oral tradition, I was fortunate enough to, to receive from my mom. So, it means um, when we speak about this connection between immortal Mahadhar Babaji and Krishna, the connection is that, um, okay, historical Krishna, it's uh, something, uh, okay, totally different, separate. It's a great divine incarnation who was in North India um, and, you know, like that. But when we take Bhagavad Gita as the philosophical text, 
then this Krishna, um, which we have in the Bhagavad Gita, really speaking, that is exactly Mahatar Babaji. Why? Because Vyasadeva was direct disciple of Mahatar Babaji, and Vyasadeva was writing you know, the Bhagavad Gita exactly in the area of Badrinath. And according to the oral tradition, we know that Mahatar Babaji at that time, something like five or six thousand years back, he gave a lot of spiritual instructions to the Vyasadeva. And Vyasadeva, he just described all that uh, spiritual instructions which he received from Mahatar Babaji into this Bhagavad Gita. And it means um, and let us say, uh, let me repeat again, the historical Krishna, it's one part of the story. And the symbolical Krishna, um, which is in um, Bhagavad Gita, this is exactly Mahadhar Babaji is. So that's, that's the connection uh, in a couple of words between Mahadhar Babaji and Krishna. So God bless you. See you next time.